this is a short tutorial on how to use the wall to help you get into a, a handstand. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is just a couple of drills um, because we don't want to get too um, dependent on the wall to practice our handstands. But sometimes the wall can be a really good friend to allow us to learn some of the tricks to staying up in our handstand. It can also help us get over the fear a little bit of just going upside down on our hands. So in order to go upside down on the, on the wall in a handstand, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it facing the wall or you can do it away from the wall. So today we're going to look at both ways and then you can play around with both of those and see what works for you and then you can keep practicing. Okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come pretty close to the wall, maybe about six inches away from the wall, okay, until you feel pretty confident. And then you're going to try to lift up one leg. So we're trying not to take a big giant kick to get into the handstand. We're trying to just get the right leg, okay, the right toes to lift off the floor, which is the little kick with the left leg, okay? Now I'm pressing into my hands, I'm using my spider fingers here, pressing really hard on all ten hands, ten fingers, and then I'm going to just little kick and see if I can touch the wall. Once I know I can touch the wall, then I'm way less scared, right, of the handstand itself, okay? So again, lift up the left leg or right, whichever side you're most comfortable with, and then just do a little tiny kick and then see if you can get your legs to the wall. Once you're there and you're starting to feel comfortable, then use your spider fingers, start to hollow out, and see if you can get the feet away from the wall and keep your balance with the feet off the wall. And once you start to do that, then you'll be able to start to move off the wall and you'll be way less scared when you're doing the handstands away from the wall. So I still practice like this all the time because my handstands aren't like my greatest asset. I still struggle with them. I work on them every single day. Um, so a lot of times if I know that I just really want the wall so that I can just stay up so that I can work drills while I'm in my handstand, then sometimes I'll go to the wall because I can't always hold them long enough um, when I don't have the wall to actually work on, you know, hollowing out, spider fingers, doing all those things. So I'm just going to show you that one more time and then I'm going to show you how to do it not facing the wall. So again, you want to come about six to eight inches from the wall, maybe ten, just depends on your comfort zone. Press into all ten of your fingertips, spider fingers here, and then you're going to lift one leg up. All right, it is stronger, so I'm using my right toes to kick here, okay? I'm really pressing into my hands. I'm looking in between my hands, and I'm going to get a little kick. And then my left toes barely touch the wall, but if they both touch, that's okay. Spider fingers, I'm trying to balance off the wall now. And notice, I would just fall out of my hands in there because my right foot went onto the wall, but that's okay. Because I'm just practicing drills here, that's what the wall is for. And now I'm trying to hang on to balance while also working on spider fingers, hollowing out, really pulling the ribs together, hollowing out the tummy. I usually have splayed ribs. My back is arched a little too much in my handstands, which is one of the reasons I fall over. Okay? So the other way to do it is not facing the wall. And this way, we're going to make an L shape with the body. So you're going to come down, like you're coming into like a downward facing dog, okay? And then you're going to start to walk the feet onto the wall. And here, you want to try to make an L shape with the body. But notice how my wrists are not directly underneath my shoulders. So I really need to get my wrists underneath my shoulders, so I'm not close enough to the wall. So that means I need to take my hands back closer to the wall without actually moving so this also can be a little bit scary. You don't have to be super flexi flexible to be able to do this either. It can be a little bit scary because you're going to feel like you're going forward, right? Because you're going to get the shoulder of the wrist. So um, usually you're not going to have to worry about going forward, even though it feels like you're going to go forward, um, because your body just won't let you do that, okay? So what you're going to do here is you're going to come back into that down dog, and notice now the down dog is really narrower. And then, I'm going to walk back up the wall. And now, notice, my shoulders are way off my wrist. I have a nice H shape of my body. And this feels really hard. Now, so I'm going to come down, because 
that is so hard, but it's definitely a way to start to build your strength. And then once you can get the shoulders directly over the wrist and get that nice, basically like half box shape or 90 degree shape of the body, then you can start to lift one foot off the wall at a time. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So it's really important to get that nice 90 degrees first so that you just know how that feels because that's, um, in my opinion, that's the part that's a little scary. It also really shows how much pressure and strength um, you have to take through the shoulders, okay? So you really have to press through the shoulders. You got a lot of pressure on the shoulders, pressure on the wrists to make sure that you're really pressing into all 10 of your fingertips. And then, so now I know that I need to be a little bit of a narrower down and off before I climb the wall. Because remember when I was up here, I was too far. So I've got to pull it back. And then I'm going to start climbing the wall. And then I'm going to come into my 90 degrees. There it is. And then I can start to try to lift off the wall. And you can even just, you know, Toe tap a little bit here, just toe taps. There it is. Balancing, and then coming back down. Coming back down is super graceful. You can also cartwheel off the wall, which I'll show you that in a different tutorial. So notice how I'm really winded, I'm really tired. Um, so it only takes five or 10 minutes a day to work on this stuff to actually build a lot of strength. And um, Pilates is also one way that I've built enough strength in my core to help with my handstand balance. So this will be a journey that we can work on together and hopefully we will all grow stronger as we move through this journey together, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna sign off and we'll do another handstand workshop um, in a couple more days. And stay safe, stay healthy, namaste.